Why do LED lights not work for your vehicle? Is there a complete list of vehicles that are or are not compatible with LED light bulbs? Unfortunately, no, but there are some rules to follow. Rule number one, the newer the vehicle is, the higher chance you might need an accessory to make LED bulbs work. And that's why you usually don't see issues when installing LED bulbs in classic cars. Rule number two, luxury cars need your attention because luxury vehicles come with a lot of features, including a strict lighting monitor system for most bulbs in the vehicle. Luckily, luxury cars and higher trim vehicles are often equipped with stock LED bulbs, which are not serviceable by the owner. Checking the light or console with the owner's manual is a good way to save time and effort before looking for LED replacement bulbs. Rule number three, most Japanese vehicles are DIY friendly, while European cars are not, and American vehicles are in between. Most of our Toyota and Honda installations are very smooth, while BMW, Audi, and Mercedes-Benz usually will have an error message after the installation. Dodge is the strictest among American vehicles. What are some of the issues when an LED bulb is not compatible? Error message, flickering, hyper-flashing, random off, not turning on. Error message, when do you see an error message? It could happen on any vehicle and any application, from brake light bulbs to headlight bulbs. Some vehicles only warn owners when the brake lights are out. Some monitor all the lights and give a very specific message like right reversing light. Some will only display a light bulb icon on the dashboard. Is it okay to leave the message there? If the error message is specific, telling you which light bulb is out, it does no harm to your vehicle. If you don't mind seeing the error message, it is okay to leave it there. However, some vehicles will have the engine light go on when an LED brake light is installed. If that's the case, you need to fix it. It also depends on if the lighting is still functioning properly with that error message. In some vehicles, LED lights are still working as usual, even with the error message. Like this 2014 Mercedes CLA headlight, we switched from stock HID to LED. Flickering. What are the symptoms of an LED bulb flickering? It could be a constant high frequency on-off, like DRL flickering, or a slower on-off every few minutes, like LED headlight flickering. On which vehicles do you see this? DRL flickering is very common for Japanese vehicles that have both high beam and DRL on one 9005 bulb. Headlight flickering is very common on Jeep vehicles. Hyperflashing. Is hyperflashing the same as flickering? No, hyperflashing most often happens on turn signals. It's common to see hyperflashing when one of the stock halogen bulbs has burnt out. On which vehicles do you see this? All vehicles except those that have an LED-compatible electronic flasher, which we will cover later. Random off. When does random off happen? This could happen on the headlights or fog lights. Everything works fine when you first turn on the light, then after driving for a while, both the driver side and passenger side lights shut off at the same time. The symptom will repeat after you manually turn them off and back on. On which vehicles do you see this? Random off happens on a lot of Dodge vehicles. Not turning on. What about those LED lights not turning on at all? This could happen on any application. The problem will probably not be related to the car. In most cases, it could be a bulb polarity issue. On which vehicles do you see this? Polarity issues are not related to the vehicles, but the bulbs themselves. What are some other issues? Unlike those above common issues, some are specific to vehicles. Like when you replace an LED headlight on some Ford vehicles, the lights work correctly. However, when you have the low beams on and then turn on the fog lights, the low beams will automatically switch to the high beam application. How does my vehicle detect if it's an LED bulb or a halogen bulb? CAN bus. What is CAN bus? CAN bus is a controller area network bus. A motherboard in a computer is a simplified version of a CAN bus system. When you want to print, the PC sends out instructions or commands to the printer. The PC is also monitoring feedback from the printer, like low toner. How does CAN bus work? 
A CAN bus system is not only talking to other components via the system's output terminals, but also listening to them via its input terminals. This is accomplished by checking the current on different I-O circuits. If the current from a lighting circuit traveling back to the input terminal is within the range of the settings of that terminal, then the CAN bus system believes the light is good. If the current is not within that range, then the system will think there might be something wrong with the light. What are the default CAN bus settings for a vehicle light bulb? Unfortunately, there is not a standard setting for each application among car manufacturers. Some have a wider range of settings like Lexus, some have a very strict setting like BMW, and some only have a low limit setting like Honda. Others have both high and low settings like a Dodge Ram. And how to fix? Load resistor, decoder, DRL relay kit, DRL resistor kit, DRL compatible bulbs, electronic flasher relay, CAN bus bulbs. Load resistor. How does a load resistor work? Knowing that your vehicle is checking the power consumption of the bulb to tell if it is a bad bulb, you can add a load equalizer to the LED bulbs to match the original power of the stock bulb. LED plus load resistor equals stock bulb. When will a resistor help? Case 1. Error code. Your vehicle is monitoring the electric current running through a circuit to tell if a failure occurs. Depending on different vehicles, it could either present an error message on the dashboard, turn the light on and off as a way of trying to reactivate bulbs which are flickering, or shut off the circuit until fixed. A parallel resistor can help to increase the current to let the CAN bus system believe an LED bulb is not a failed stock bulb. What is the proper current? The range of working currents that will not trigger an error depends on the settings of the car manufacturer. They don't have a common standard right now. Does that mean we cannot figure it out? No, the best method is to try and match the stock bulb's power consumption. How much power does a standard stock bulb consume at 12 volts? A typical standard headlight halogen bulb consumes 55 watts. A typical standard fog light halogen bulb consumes 35 watts to 55 watts. A typical standard brake light halogen bulb consumes 27 watts. A typical standard 921 reverse halogen bulb consumes 18 watts. A typical standard interior halogen bulb consumes 4 watts. So how many resistors do I need? The most commonly used and price-friendly resistor is a 6-ohm 50-watt resistor which consumes 24 watts at 12 volts. When you figure out the power difference between the LED and halogen bulb, you will know how many resistors are required. A typical standard headlight LED bulb consumes 35 watts. A typical standard fog light LED bulb consumes 7 watts. A typical standard brake light LED bulb consumes 5 watts. A typical standard 921 reverse light LED bulb consumes 6 watts. And a typical standard 194 interior light LED bulb consumes 2 watts. From this chart, we know that for headlights, fog lights, and brake lights, one 6 ohm resistor will add enough power to each LED bulb to be very close to the stock bulb. Likewise, a 12 ohm resistor will work for a 921 reverse light and a 100 ohm resistor will work for a 194 interior light. Knowing the power difference, will resistors be a 100% cure? Unfortunately, no. Reason 1. Some vehicles have a very narrow range of settings, which means we have to nearly match the exact current running through the circuit for a stock halogen bulb, not lower or higher. However, not all LED bulbs consume the same power, Depending on different LED chips and cooling systems, some draw more power and others less. Also, unlike a halogen bulb, the current draw from an LED bulb is not a constant value. The LED driver is monitoring and adjusting the power draw all the time to keep the LED chip from burning out. Reason 2. It is hard to find the exact matching resistor, though the 6 ohm is the most commonly used in automotives. Reason 3. It is not always practical to install a load resistor due to the heat issue. How hot can a resistor get? A 6 ohm 50 watt resistor can withstand temperatures as high as 500 degrees Fahrenheit. The one installed in a passenger car can run as hot as the engine, which is over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. That's why you want to make sure the resistors are installed properly by securely mounting them to a metal surface. With that being said, it is not practical to put a resistor inside a dust cover 
or a map light cover. Case 2. Turn signal hyperflashing. What is hyperflashing? The flash rate of a traditional thermal relay is not set, but will change according to its load. If less current is running through the coil of a thermal relay, the capacitor in the relay will be charged and discharged more frequently, which will cause a quicker on-off flashing. On the other hand, if the current is higher, then the slower the flashing rate will be. Then, what is the proper load? A typical standard turn signal stock bulb consumes 27 watts at 12 volts. Two bulbs, both front and rear, will be 54 watts on each side of the vehicle. Please note, all the directional signals on one side of a car are on the same load circuit. That's why you always see both front and rear turn signals flash at the same time. How many resistors do I need? This is a simple math problem. A typical standard turn signal LED bulb consumes 5 watts at 12 volts, which is 22 watts less than a stock bulb. A 6 ohm 50 watt resistor consumes 24 watts at 12 volts, which is about the right amount to make up for the missing power when switching to LED. So the answer is one 6 ohm resistor needed for each standard LED turn signal bulb. People ask, why does a 6 ohm 50 watt resistor consume only 24 watts instead of 50 watts? Just like a 200 horsepower engine does not always run at its full speed, according to Ohm's law, power P equals V squared divided by R. If the resistor is running at 12 volts, P equals 12 squared divided by 6 equals 24 watts. If a resistor is running at 17.3 volts, P equals 17.3 squared divided by 6 equals 50 watts. 50 watts is the maximum power rating of the resistor. It is at risk of burning out to run a resistor over its maximum rated power. How to install a load resistor? First, resistors should be installed parallel to the target circuit to add power. Second, resistors should be mounted directly onto a metal surface because they will get very hot. Check our video to find out how to identify the target circuit and mount a resistor. Decoder. What is a decoder? Unlike a resistor, there are three key components in a decoder. Capacitor, resistor, and circuit board. How does a decoder work? Some vehicles only test the current when the light is turned on. In this case, a decoder usually helps. The decoder's main component, a large capacitor, is to boost the current when the light is turned on. The capacitor is a power bank, and it can take in as much power as rated in a short period of time. There are two functions of the resistor here. One is to slightly increase the power. The other is to discharge the capacitor when the light is turned off. Finally, the circuit board helps to put all the other components like transistors and diodes together. It will also make the decoder plug and play without polarity. Will a decoder work for my car? A decoder is a good choice for cars that only test for a bad light when turned on. It is also good for minor flickering. The large capacitor will help to smooth the current and reduce flickering. Another reason you would want to dry a decoder instead of a resistor is when there is no place to mount the hot resistor especially for those housings with a dust cap. The operating temperature of a decoder is less than 150 degrees Fahrenheit. How to install a decoder? The good thing about decoders is that they are plug and play. The only thing you need to pay attention to is its size to make sure it can fit into the housing. The more powerful a decoder is, the larger the size. A typical decoder is 2.5 inches by 2 inches by 1 inch. DRL Relay Kit what does a DRL relay kit contain? Capacitor, relay, fuse, and connectors. How does a DRL relay work? Before we talk about how the DRL relay kit works, we need to learn why LED DRLs flicker. If an LED DRL bulb flickers, then the halogen DRL bulb flickers too, but at a very low frequency that cannot be observed by the human eye. Some vehicles have the same bulb function as both high beam and DRL. However, the DRL is not as bright as the high beam. How does that happen? Many people think the vehicle supplies a lower power to the bulb when the DRLs are on. And there are some vehicles that do that, which we'll cover in the next kit. But in this case, they use PWM, pulse width modulation, to power the DRL, which means your DRL is constantly switching on, off, on, off. The halogen bulb has a burning filament and the flame is slow in reacting to the on, off. However, LEDs are instant on and off. That's why your eyes can see an LED DRL flickering, but not a halogen. 
instead of using the PWM, the kit pulls 12 volts of power directly from the car battery. The relay in the kit is to control DRL on-off, which is powered by the PWM power after being smoothed by the capacitor in the kit. When will a DRL relay kit help? If you have a newer vehicle, most are after 2010, with DRLs that have the same bulb as the high beams, the vehicle uses PWM to lower the brightness of DRL. Then the DRL relay kit will work. How to install the DRL relay kit? Although there are a couple of connectors on this kit, it is still plug and play. We have a step-by-step -step video to guide anyone who needs to install this kit. Is the DRL relay kit a perfect solution? No. The downside of this kit is the DRL runs at full brightness instead of being dimmed. Although it is during daytime, it is still too bright. DRL Resistor Kit What does a DRL resistor kit contain? One 6-ohm 50-watt resistor, one female connector, and two male connectors. How does a DRL resistor kit work? Unlike modern vehicles that use PWM to power the DRL, older, mostly before 2010, Cars have a bridge to switch the two high beam bulbs from parallel to a series circuit when the DRL is turned on. This will reduce the voltage in half, from 12 volts to 6 volts. The filament of a halogen bulb burns at half brightness when at 6 volts. However, most LED headlight bulbs will not light when the power is at or lower than 9 volts. Now the 6 ohm resistor comes into play. Due to the fact that a typical LED high beam bulb consumes more power than a 6 ohm resistor. So when we put one resistor and two LED high beam bulbs on a series circuit, according to the Ohm's law, the side with two LED bulbs is delivered with a higher voltage which will power the bulbs. When does a DRL resistor kit work? If you have an older vehicle that runs two DRL bulbs in series, then this kit will be the right pick. One simple tip to help. If you unplug one DRL bulb, both DRL bulbs are turned off, then they are in a series. How to install DRL resistor kit? This is also plug and play, with less steps compared with the DRL relay kit. We have a step-by-step -step video to guide anyone who needs to install this kit. Does DRL resistor kit make DRLs run at full brightness? No, but the brightness differs depending on how much voltage is distributed to the side with two LED bulbs. In other words, it is determined by the power consumption of the LED bulb itself. DRL compatible light bulbs. How does a DRL compatible bulb work? DRL compatible bulbs are designed to work at a wider range of voltage, 6 volts to 18 volts. How do you install a DRL compatible bulb? They are plug and play. Does a DRL compatible bulb make DRLs run at full brightness? No. It shines at half brightness at 6 volts and full brightness at over 12 volts. Electronic Flasher Relay What is an electronic flasher relay? Compared with traditional thermal flasher relays that only work with halogen bulbs, an electronic relay is compatible with both halogen turn signal bulbs and LED bulbs. A traditional thermal relay has a coil, capacitor, and resistor as the main components, while an electronic relay has a circuit board. When will an electronic flasher relay help? The electronic flasher will only work to fix hyperflashing on a turn signal, and it only works when a vehicle comes with a traditional thermal relay. A lot of modern vehicles have an onboard relay that is not serviceable by the owner. Is it a good solution for turn signal hyperflashing? Yes, especially when you have the relay located in a fuse box. However, a lot of flasher relays are located under the dashboard above the pedals, you may need to remove the whole panel and turn the signal switch assembly before you can reach the relay. CAN bus bulbs What are CAN bus bulbs? A CAN bus bulb is an LED bulb with a built-in resistor, or resistor plus indicator, to run at a power as high as a standard halogen bulb consumes. How does a CAN bus bulb work? Because the built-in resistor, or both resistor and inductor, increases the LED bulb's power, your vehicle may read a CAN bus bulb as a standard halogen without any issue. In which case should I get a CAN bus bulb? When adding a resistor is not practical or when a CAN bus bulb is available. How to install a CAN bus bulb? They are plug and play, just like a standard halogen bulb. It looks like this is the best solution so far? Not necessarily. What's wrong with a CAN bus bulb? First, in order to build the extra resistor and inductor, a CAN bus bulb is usually bigger and longer than other LED bulbs and stock halogen bulbs, 
which might cause a problem with fitment. Second, the extra built-in resistor and inductor generate extra heat. Heat is the number one killer of LED chips. Most CAN bus bulbs have a shorter lifespan unless they have a very efficient cooling system, which will also make the bulb even bigger, causing more fitment issues. Third, in order to balance the heat of a CAN bus bulb, the highest power a CAN bus bulb can reach is limited, so it may not work as well as expected. Finally, a CAN bus bulb costs more than a standard bulb due to the add-on feature. There are still other solutions that are vehicle-specific. The issue we mentioned in the beginning, where turning on the fog light will switch an LED low beam to high beam for some Ford vehicles, you can find custom solutions, like the popular Bambi mod. If you have an issue or solution we did not mention, let us know in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Safer, smarter, brighter, better. We are Ala Lighting.